Welcome. Today we will be solving Explore from Hack the Box, an easy rooted Android machine. We're running Nmap originally. We're going to use dash p dash to say all ports, dash sc for run default scripts, sv for enumerate versions, explore for the host name, which I've set in my Etsy host using sudo. I went to say output the A result to an Nmap file. This is the name of the file, and then piping it to lolcat to make it rainbowy. Cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and minimize Burp real quick. We're going to go look at the ports now. So we have port 2222 for SSH. Nmap has uh, figured out what, what it's running despite being on an uncommon port. We have port quadruple five for running some kind of service. The same thing for this port here, 34545, some kind of HTTP protocol. You can tell by the headers here. However, nothing to really talk about right now. Port 42135, running ES file, it's Bora. Port 59777, allegedly running Bucket. It's worth noting that in, this is at, this is in fact actually wrong, and Map has uh, incorrectly identified what this is actually running. We can go ahead and Google this and prove to otherwise. Here this is Android vulnerability. If I scroll down a little bit more, we can see that it has detected that it's a phone. There may be some cases where it mentions Android, but I can't quite see that right now. But we know it's some kind of phone. Going back up to our browser, I'm going to go ahead and check out this Android vulnerability. Scroll down a little bit, and there should be a CV that we see. I'm going to go ahead and Google the CV. Check out the exploit DB. And I don't really trust exploits, so I think it's definitely worth reviewing the code before you do anything. Now it is on exploit DB, so it's probably fine, but it's always worth to download the code and look at it yourself. I'm going to go ahead and we'll get it. Save it to esfile.py. Code the current directory. Apologies if you can hear my dog, by the way, he's barking, but I'll see to him in a minute. Cool, so this is the file. I'm going to go ahead and debug this. Basically, I want to go and step through the code. I don't really need to, but because I can just read it, but I think it might be beneficial to teach this. So I'm going to go ahead into my debug. Um, you will need to install the Python extension for VS Code, but that's not too difficult. It will probably prompt you to try to do that. I'm going to go ahead and create a launch.json file. Okay, this will just run this. I'm going to go ahead and review the first few lines. We can see here that we're importing some modules, um, the name of the exploit, what it, what it relates to in the CV. We can see here that there's an if len is less than three, so this is the last line sign, basically for an error. So I know that I need to provide some commands. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm just going to go ahead and pull up my launch.json that I have stored locally. I'm going to go ahead and add in um, two commands, so the command and the IP. I know by going ahead and looking at this that it wants us to use one of these. So go ahead and use list pictures, for example. I'm going to go ahead and add a comma here, and that should all work. Okay. This is the command, and this is the host. If we run this normally, it will tell us that we haven't provided anything, such as like this. So I can spell right. If I just do that, it says we want this. If I go to, say, A, in fact, it doesn't actually seem to want to tell us the available commands. Perhaps if I do slash help, it will tell me. Never mind, I guess I have to read the code directly. Um, basically, these are, um, if I maybe do like this, for example, this might be what I want, actually. Um, Bore.htp, maybe it will, then will tell me. There we go, so that actually tells me the available commands. List files, pictures, videos, etc. I know that list pictures gives us the next part of the solution, so I'm using that as an example. I'm going to go ahead and put that into my JSON. You can see here these are the arguments. I'm going to go ahead and do an additional thing and go into my here, go to HTTP proxy and basically tell it to route all traffic via burp. Okay, so if we now run that, it should now route it through burp. I'm going to go ahead and run my intercept. It should work, although I'm not quite sure, given that it's going to be running through VS Code. Um, but we'll find out just for the sake of actually, I'm going to go ahead and just make sure it does. I'm going to go and export the proxy settings in VS Code directly. That should hopefully work. Okay, uh, now we're going to go ahead and hit run. And it should make a request and burp should catch it. Okay, so this is what gets run. So um, I can see here it's very simple. I can post request to the root of, this, of, the, of the application running on port 59777 and we're sending some JSON. Okay, so let's look at the code. I'm going to go and drop that and uh, let's review the code. I'm going to go ahead and pause here because we know we've got this far. I'm going to go ahead and refresh the code and it should now hit here. 
cool. So here it is for setting the URL, simply just our second argument, as in this, plus port, keep going down. Um, this is a list of the real commands, checking if the commands are in there. Setting the header, so JSON, as you can see here, we sent some JSON, or we did, yeah, now gone. Um, and then certain proxy information, don't need to worry about too much right now. This is just defining functions that we're not yet calling. This is checking if the command we provided, i.e. list pictures, is in uh, the list above. And then if it is, then basically do listing. Okay, so let's go ahead and step into that. And it says here, response equals HTTP post. In this case, it's simply just going to a, uh, a bespoke function, um, creating JSON, um, basically taking um, our command plus this and formatting it in JSON. Then it's then sending this request using post, which is in the request library of Python. And if we hit go on here, we should now get the burp request. And you can see here, same sort of thing. I'm going to go ahead and hit repeater on here, and we'll go look at we go ahead and look at the response beforehand. By doing that, we can see that there's some data that's come back. If we change this to say AAA, we're going to get nothing forbidden. However, if we do this, we actually get, you know, the ability to read some content. Um, if we go ahead and look at the code, there's an additional line here, return AST literal eval. What this will do is it will look at the response and it will actually convert this to a dictionary, which is pretty helpful. As you'll see here, if I go ahead and um, let the work the request through, so forward. I'm going to go ahead and now do the content. So here we can see the response is equal to that long string of data uh, that looks like this. Um, if I can find it, um, it should be in here somewhere. Raw, nope, uh, this text here, basically just all the data we just saw. However, when we pass it through here, it will actually then return it to be a nicely ordered dictionary. And then we simply just iterate through that contents. And if I now hit play, you'll now see all the contents now get basically printed out to us in a nice fashion. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, it means that basically we're sending a HTTP request um, with the argument of uh, list pictures and then just uh, parsing the response. Very simple. We can go ahead and look in the original code here and say do a different example of say, I don't know, list files. We can then go to burp, paste this in here, and then we should get some different kind of data, which is cool. And um. Yeah, so simply sending a HTTP request, very simple, and because see here it's running Android and, you know, bits and pieces. Um, I'm going to go back just to look at the list pictures, and we can see that in here we have a cred.jpg. I believe, given the exploit um, or the downloading of the file, it simply just goes to that directory. If I go into, if I open up another repeater, I go to um, change request method, and then I just change that to there. That might give us... Yeah, so that has worked. The reason I know this would work is because basically the actual command that this function here, the, um, the where is it? Um, the if command is nine, which is get file, you'll see here, um, get file. Then um, basically what it does is it just makes a simple uh, checks if we're sending a path and stuff. And then it simply just depends our path to the URL, takes the output and writes it to a file. Okay, so we could we could do this ourselves. Basically, we could just go copy, um, yeah, copy to um, kill, copy as kill command. I could then just go like this, and um, I think we could probably just put that into um, let's say creds.jpg. This may work, it may not. I'm not actually sure, but we can find out. Okay, xdg dash open creds.jpg. Did it work? Okay. In this case, it basically broke because some of the binary data coming back probably messed it up. But if we were to go to the same URL, for example, um, in, our, in our bet, we could probably just replicate. Copy, um, copy URL, go to here, paste that there, and just download the file directly or just look at it. Okay, so curl had some issues because basically the binary data was a bit off. It probably messed up somewhere. There probably is a way to output this. Maybe it's even as simple as doing, say, dash, maybe o, creds.jpg. Maybe that's what I'm looking for. OK, an error. Um, not quite sure um, why we got that. Maybe because burp is proxying, quite possibly. Um, anyway, I'm not sure. But the point is, anyways, that uh, we have this. So what do I see here? We have Christy 
so a username and then some kind of password. I did try to demonstrate some OCR, so basic optical content. I'm not sure what OCR stands for actually, but basically you can you can take the imaging of vertex text. Um, so I had to try that with the video, but it didn't work very well. I want to go ahead and just basically try the SSH job. So Christy, like this, um, using the port quadruple two. If I'd remove that, it was going to throw an error as. Like so. <coughs> okay, so we want to go ahead and use the password. Christy 5H also. Go ahead and just grab that from here. Should be in here somewhere. There we go. Cool. In my case, I wasn't sure um, where whether this was an L or an I. So I I basically wrote both down. Um, do this. Okay. Copy. And um, paste. Maybe I didn't copy that right. There's missing exclamation mark. Copy. Copy. And paste. Okay, I don't know why that isn't working. Christy, that should work, but for some other reason it is not. Maybe I typed something in wrong. Let me check my terminal. Christy, I export a HTB. Okay, there we go. Now it's working. Okay, so since we're in an Android, we have less commands. So, for example, I can do ID, but I can't say do um, I'm trying to think of like locate or or maybe which. <coughs> okay, which does work, but there are some basically reduced commands. In this case, we can see that we're running the SHR. So I think maybe I can do this. Maybe this will work. I'm not actually sure. I do a lot of these things on the fly and kind of just hope they work. To be honest, so we'll find out. Okay, that didn't work, so I guess it's not set. But if we do end, we can maybe look at the data set so um can't actually see where our shell is set but that's not a problem right now i'm not gonna worry about it okay so moving on um what i'm gonna go ahead and do now is uh basically enumerate the app uh, enumerate the the android that's running um basically in this case i just looked at all the files and tried to figure out what's going on um in the end what it turned out to be if you look at net stat um dash t unlp what that will do is basically just list um the things that are listening um we can see that there are a bunch of stuff open namely this port 55555 if i go ahead and google this like i did before for android it's not that wrong but it's okay basically what it's saying is android being shipped to tcp port 5555 enabled is that okay interesting turns out this is running as root as well so i can't actually access this like i can locally but i can't externally for example if i try to I try to netcat into explore.htb on port 5555. Pretty sure nothing will work, right? But if I um if I do what's called an SSH tunnel, it then may work. So I want to go ahead and run the same command as I did before and create an SSH tunnel. What this will do is it will route my port, my local host 5555 to local host 555 on there on the machine. You'll see here if I hit enter there. And then I go to um, paste password. If I now run this again, you'll probably see that now there's a, a port forward open. Potentially, there should be at least. Um, it might be this one. Um, I guess it's you running it over SSH. Um, <laughs> but basically, you saw that this one here, there's now there's two. Uh, before, there was just the one, I believe, yeah. So this extra one basically is is that extra um, port redirect. At least I'm pretty sure it is. Correct me if I'm wrong. Anyways, the point is that now I can go ahead and probably net cut into this. Maybe I don't get any response this time, but um, the point is is I can now go ahead and use what's called ADB. So ADB, basically Android Debug Bridge, is a way to interface with an Android. For example, in this case, I can do ADB Connect localhost 5555. Which actually is ADBing into the remote machine because I have done the uh, the SSH forwarding, and it should then say connected to. If I change this, to say five 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 four connection refused. <coughs> okay, so if I do ADB devices, now we can see that we have localhost five 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 device open. If I then do ADB root, I believe that would then run that, and then ADB shell, and then now if I do ID, now we're running as root. And if uh, assuming host name works, we should okay. It doesn't actually want to um give us a host name, but we can go to cat 
but I want to show an easy way to do this. If I had to go ahead and just run this, we can see that there's a root.txt. Um, oh, it's because I have dollar signed it. If I go ahead and cat that, that, there we go. Flag, flag, flag. Okay, so just to summarize, what we did is we saw that there was a port 5977 open. We googled it, along with knowledge of the underlying operating system of being a phone or an Android. Um, we found an exploit, we reviewed the exploit, we manually used that exploit to um, basically not have to use that code. We just used the logic defined in the code to basically work backwards and do it ourselves. We used burp to do this, so in our case we used repeater. That pulled down the file. If we go back, we can also see that we use this list pictures or you know list files. Simply no knowledge of how it works, but purely just looking at the code and reverse engineering it. But this code is fairly simple and just use HTTP, which is really nice. Anyways, um yeah, so then we we then we able to find a file, uh, which is apparently not showing here. We use that then to SSH in. Uh, we found port 555 locally running. We set up a port forward using this here, which then allowed our system to, to, to connect into the local host of 5555, basically opening this port up to us, but only us. And then we were then able to open up ADB. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully that was helpful. Help. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, I thought I'd go into a little bit more detail rather than just toning the box in like a minute because it is quite straightforward. I thought I'd, you know, deliver some additional ways to maybe do it, you know, by doing the burp stuff manually and just reversing the uh, the exploit. <coughs> and hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments and of course like, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care everyone. Bye.